Oh, fuck, I... Oh, okay, so, oh, well, good thing oh. I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, we are back. We will bring you Mac on Man on the Stretch against John Johnson on Blue Black Omnitel. And I'm so sorry, Min, I never actually knew how to pronounce your entire name, so maybe... Oh, no, you that's okay. Just call me Min. Everyone calls me Min, no worries. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just one time for the camera, how, how would I pronounce your name? Uh, it's pronounced Min Hajal. Uh, and then the last name is pronounced Hawk, like the bird. So. Ah, okay, okay. So, tell us something about yourself. Like, where are we waiting for the game to be set up? Um, uh, what sure. Le legacy, where are you from? What are you doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so, I'm uh, from Columbus, Ohio. I was primarily a Miracles player, part of the infamous Cabal, so to speak. Um, good friends with Anurag and whatnot. And since then, we've been, since the ban, I guess, we've been like, playing different control decks, the decks all kind of sucked. And then we, <laughs> uh, the past few days, I guess a week or two, uh, we were playing Portent Miracles, Unpredictable, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so I play control decks pretty much exclusively. So yeah, that's me. Cool. And who do you like in this matchup? Like Man on a Stretch against Blue Black Omnitel, that's not really something you get to see every day in Legacy. So no. Yeah, it's very unique. Probably it's not really cool. like any experience there, but yeah, it, it's truly unique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the matchup, um, I, I kind of thought about this a little bit, but not too, too much. It seems kind of like two ships passing in the night. Oh, it looks like they're about to start. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I honestly don't know who is favored at all. It basically is whoever can goldfish faster and whoever has the most disruption as quickly as possible. Yeah, like the first game is going to be pretty hard for Doyle unless mm -hmm. he hits like a couple of speed cabot therapies early on. Right. And Sean's hand looks a bit weird. Like he might just have to turn three kill though because Limdul's Sword gives him like pretty much... Let's like, find pretty much everything he needs, yes. Yeah, but he would need to find Brainstorm to draw onto that since Limdul's Sword itself doesn't really draw a card. So yes. unless he, he spikes... Okay, and he actually oh, he takes the ball again, okay. I guess he mulliganed because he felt that the hand was too slow with him being... Right, 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 actually, he's on the draw, which is better for him <laughs> in this matchup. It's, it's it works really weird because the yes. only way that Mac can get cards into his graveyard is by drawing up to seven cards and discarding. So we actually assume that John... Yeah, John won the die roll. He got second place in this group. Yes. Uh, choose. Correct. Uh, if you look at, actually, Doyle's hand... Uh, so he, he has to not mulligan, so he has to keep seven at all times and he has to go to discard... But if you look at his hand, it doesn't actually have any dredgers in it. Oh, that's super unfortunate for him. Or or Phantasmagorian. So there's no way for him to enable his dex engine at all. Yeah, I sometimes wonder whether them like I never played the deck, but sometimes I wonder are there certain hands where you actually do take a mulligan? But like here he gets a discard grizzle brand, I guess, but or bridge yeah. probably, or dread return with oh, or nether shadow and then put where it's three cards on top, that's gonna take forever. Yeah, there's no real plan associated with this hand, so I think he actually should have taken a mulligan and just time walked himself twice. Yeah, as as an, as unfortunate as it sounds. Yeah, and and but, John, he also doesn't really do anything. Like he's got his own time walk in hand, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not there's not a lot going on in either player's hand right now, so it's kind of it, it's weird because we expected both players to kind of be doing their own thing, but neither one is really playing magic right now. Yeah. John could actually think about uh, fossil filling that probe because that would be another time walk. I'm just not sure whether he really wants to do that. Yeah, so, that's an interesting thing. So what what else would he force of will in in this matchup at all? Uh, unless it's like the dread return at the very end, and that won't matter because his hand will be stripped by cabal therapy, right? Yeah, like as you mentioned, like cabal therapy might be the only other card that you might mm -hmm. want to force fill, but he's still like a land. And something to put into play away from winning this game. <laughs> and actually, if, if he actually goes for, say, show and tell, and Mac puts in Grizzlebrand, what does that do? Let him yeah, <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah, like if he had a Dredger in the graveyard already, he could go really crazy with Grizzlebrand, but yep. unfortunately, he doesn't. And not. John also kind of whiffs, so. Oh. Well, isn't so John's main plan, game plan, is to show and tell Omniscience into play and then win immediately with Cunning Wish? So in that case, Crystal Brand wouldn't actually do anything because John's going to win that turn. Yeah. But it might end up being a, a place where it's John plays Show and Tell, puts an Emrakul, and Doyle will put in Crystal Brand, and it's just a very weird position to be in. Yeah. 
like if John, I guess if John draws a land and since he ha he already saw that Doyle doesn't have a dredger, he mm -hmm. might actually just go for exactly what you mentioned, like trying to find omniscience. He also has a brainstorm to try and go for that. He also has, I, I assume he has access to surgical in the sideboard. So now that uh, he's cunning, he does. Yeah, his list yeah. is. He has one surgical extraction on the sideboard, and that's it. That's the only like real interaction in this matchup at all, actually. I guess he could also get Noxious Revival as <laughs> as another time walk. Yeah, that's that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, it's you could also, this is very strange. You could put the Dredger back on top, so he needs to draw that. Yeah, or you could put your own surgical back on top if you really needed that. But yeah, th this match really didn't play out the way oh, we, we he thought found it would. a he found a Dredger, I think. Oh, so the engine's finally starting? Yeah, yeah, he discarded a Grave Troll last turn. Uh, so it looks like... Oh, another thing that EU Lin actually brings up on in chat is that he has his big Dread Return creatures in hand already, so he type of therapy himself to get them into the graveyard. And two Bridge from Below's. His hand is actually particularly bad in this matchup. <laughs> I mean, having the Aggressive Brand certainly helps, but yeah... yeah. And I guess if John doesn't find uh, a mana source in the next couple of turns, the game will actually just be over. Yes. Like, no matter what happens, if John doesn't find a blue mana source, the game is over no matter what, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, this is a card I'm, I might actually force a for here. Because the Cabal Therapy? He's, yeah. yeah, he's very likely to name Show and Tell. And I wouldn't mind trading the Force of Will and probably a Cunning Wish for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I would also definitely force a will here. The downside is that he now can't force a film. Well, but he can still like discard end of turn Gregory's Grave Troll. That's probably kind of good enough. Yeah, he he should be able to goldfish faster until John draws a blue source, I suppose. I guess he's also gonna get the priced Amagam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Chun, can you draw the land? Let's see. <laughs> Gregory Grave Troll heads back to the graveyard. Ah, uh, Lindus Vault. Okay. No. And depending on what he dredges now, like he might even get bridges into a graveyard now, which would help him a ton with his clock. Also Icarus. And like I'm not not sure whether there's three cards on top of Nether Shadow. Like it's not clear from the layout, but I think there is. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's ready. Yeah. Yeah, and at a certain point, it actually gets into this weird position. I've seen that before, where even if you get Show and Tell into into Emrakul, and that's not even accounting for Grizzlebrand, but if you get Show and Tell into Emrakul, that might not be fast enough, right. um, especially that if might... the other player has bridges in the graveyard <laughs> and he sacrifices a bunch of of two creatures, and then he has even more power into the graveyard post Emrakul, and that that's weird, but that's how it sometimes works. No, it's definitely true. Like after after attack after the attack happens, you'll have enough zombies to definitely attack back for lethal. But it's very strange. Although, given the fact that um, it looks like Mac has two bridges in hand, it's going to be difficult for that to get to that point until he, unless he dredges at least one bridge further down. Yeah, but if Chun um, goes for that play and Mac puts Grizzlebrand into play, I could actually see him therapying himself to get the bridges into the graveyard. Agree. To, yes. To create this weird scenario where you actually have more power in play post an annihilator six than you had before. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was actually going to mention that. Like, once there is another possibility to get cabal, uh, flashback cabal therapy, I think he would actually target himself next in order to start his bridge engine going. Yeah. Oh, I guess another he another cute interaction. Here. Yeah, that he can have. Like, he doesn't have Stinkfeed Imp yet, but if you get Stinkfeed Imp to play through Dread Return or even Show and Tell, like if you don't have Crystal Brand but you have Stinkfeed Imp and enough other permanents to sacrifice to to Emrakul, you can just block Emrakul with Stinkfeed yep. Imp, and kill it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So Mac has a couple of tricks up his sleeve, but it looks like he doesn't even need those because Show and Tell is going away, and now John has two cards, at least two cards from winning the game. Three cards actually. He needs a land, a Show and Tell, and an omniscience. Boof. Yeah, it's going to be very tough for John to get through this, even though that's kind of mediocre beats. It's like there's a, an amalgam, and I guess there's going to be another one coming back next turn, uh, and a couple of Icarids. Actually, I think he might be dead next turn. Uh, he has to find more black cards to exile for Icarid, but the, yeah, the clock is pretty also heavy. can't even use the Ancient Tube anymore. He's got hitting three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, he actually he's dead next turn, like you mentioned. Yeah, he's just dead. 
Yep. Wow, that's a very weird game. Mac keeping a hand full of. Uh, let me let me double check to make sure there aren't any outs in the deck. I don't think there are though. Hmm. I mean, in in the sideboard games, I could definitely see like one hard out that would be Elish Norm, but yes. he can't really do that now. Yeah, there's no way he's getting Elish Norm right now. <laughs> wow, this is a, a kind of a crazy game. It's kind of funny when John submitted the list. Um, Mac actually messaged us and told us that there's like an error in John's list and because it lists <laughs> Elish Norm and Grand Cenobite in the, in the sideboard. And that can't yeah. really be it. And John was like, yeah, that's exactly the card that's in my sideboard. <laughs> 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 and it's almost like a hard lock for... It is. Yeah, I'm looking at the sideboard right now, but what can I see there? I guess... Oh, the, way, oh. the way to win through an Elish Norn, I guess, would be like... Prized Amalgam attacking somehow? I don't, I don't, I can't think of anything specific. I guess if Elish Norn is put into play off Show and Tell, you could technically put your own. Like, Mac has progenitors in the side part. Like, <laughs> these guys have, like their big. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you could huh. put in Genitus and just erase him. Yep. But other than that, or like technically you could also put in Grizzlebrand, and that would probably be good enough big if enough, yeah. something else. But yeah. Yeah, this is randomly makes Show and Tell like. Kind of bad for you to cast it at times, I suppose. Yeah, I've stolen many games. I have like just putting in progenitors. Yeah, yeah, having like six cards to sacrifice to Emrakul, and winning games that you're never supposed to win. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's just my thing. <laughs> I have a couple of local elf players that uh, played Elder Scale Worm, or um, there was another one, the the fifteen fifteen. Uh, isn't oh you mean the, the yeah yeah I know when it dies you get uh, three yes. five five tokens yes yeah. that one. Yeah, so that races Emrakul, actually, surprisingly enough. Yeah, and sometimes even Grizzlebrand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, he does City of Traders. Land, but yeah, all he yeah. could do is just pass and die. So, Literhosen, Max online nickname, takes the first game. So, yep. so let's... sideboarding here. Uh, so, let's talk about the show and tell sideboard, right? Because this is the most... This is the most... Um, Volatile, I suppose. Interesting that John immediately takes out one omniscience because I would think that's one of the most important cards since he knows that Mac has Progenitus and Grizzlebrand yeah. that he can to play off a random show and tell it, or even just sneak read imp. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very strange, yeah. So my first now, thing to keep that. Yes. Do you think that he is supposed to bring in the surgical extraction? Well, I think you it depends on how quickly those games are going to be over. Like, if he thinks that the games are going to be over quickly, you'd rather have it in hand. But, like, going for Cunning Vision, especially since he has Soul Lands, I think I'd rather have it in the sideboard. It also makes it somewhat harder for Mac to discard it. I don't know. Like, he, okay, I guess yeah. he could just take away the Cunning Vicious instead, but... It's like, it looks like they sideboarded very quickly and very minimally. Yeah. So, I actually really like John's hand. It, Mm -hmm. Because of the brainstorm, and Mac this time has a dredger and dredge five, and yeah, Cataxian probe, which is also like half a time walk for him because he gets to dredge right away once the card is in graveyard. It's unfortunately just a sorcery, but since John doesn't have any discard, I, you could actually see John fluster storming that probe just to buy time. I think he's going to. I think he's going to go island pass and then fluster storm the. The probe, and the next turn he can set up brainstorm with the fetch land, and then try to find something to put an off show intel off of that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's saying that you have to. He it's only one surgical construction, so you have to keep it in the sideboard. I guess that makes sense because you have to create virtual copies with your cunning wishes in order to facilitate that. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess we missed this in the discussion, but it looks like. Um, Mac brought in his Force, Force of Wills. Yeah. yeah. And now he can actually fight back if... But I'm not sure whether he wants to... Oh, he, he didn't even probe. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like uh, someone mentioned in chat uh, E. Linden says that John chose to go first. I think it's common strategy against Mantle really? Stretch to choose to go on the draw, right? Did he really? It looked like... Okay. Okay, so... That could be a misclick, or like 
I think there's no reason you would want to go first because you get an yeah, John. Okay, I guess you're just so used to clicking yes, I want to go first that he kind of missed that because he probably knows that you want to be on the draw because that's just one additional card for you. So he didn't miss it. No, it looks you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. He definitely chose to not. Uh, he chose to be on the draw. He didn't miss it. Okay. I was just looking at someone. Uh, uh, someone in chat mentioned it and I, I wanted to verify. Thank you for that. <laughs> It just correctly. Okay. Oh cool. yeah, and of course he can't probe right away because he he discards the the dredger in the end. Right, he can't. He might he, probe he, yeah. now. It depends on where he dredges, I guess. Uh, Shaman Chariot stretch three, I believe. Yes, it is. He's the also worst. gonna get. Yeah, he's also gonna get back <clears> to <throat> Christ Amaga, so at least he's got some kind of clock going. Mm -hmm. No therapies though. So this bodes problem well is, for John. Oh, the problem now is if you have your probe fluster stormed and then you fight back with force of will, and then John uses force of will, then you are very far from like getting your dredgers into a graveyard again. Yes. And uh, so he really needs to needs to. But but. Huh. Well, he, he can't force of will the fluster storm because of storm. He can't pay for any of the copies, so there's That's no true. reason to to do anything like that. I don't think uh, I think Max gonna hold under that force of will until the, the the going off turn, so to speak. Yeah, he has to. Yeah. And if I was John, I would. Hmm, it depends. Like it's this is kind of tricky because John is actually quite close to winning the game. Yeah. Probably on the next turn, actually, no. Yeah, he has cutting wish, so he's. So it, he, if he flushes from this, it's fine because uh, he has every, the win locked up in hand. Yeah. He has the ability to go show and tell omniscience with force backup and then cutting wish for the win. So I think it yeah. should be pretty elementary for this. Even position. if he lets it resolve, like the worst case scenario is uh, Mac gets two probes into uh, two caber therapies yeah, in the graveyard. Yeah. But he actually wins through two caber therapies because he can fluster storm one of them and force of it pitch Limdru Sword the other and then still win with what he has in hand. Well, but then he loses to force of it, but he doesn't right. know that. Right. He doesn't know about the force of all. So he's probably playing the game of do whatever you want as long as it's not stopping me from killing you. Yep. You you get to have your entire deck into a graveyard. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. So the, the, it, it makes sense to not plus from that Cabal Therapy because that saves him from the worst possible uh, yeah. from the dredge, which is very smart. So if we're right, this should be the end of the game right now. Yeah, so... I wonder whether Doyle is going to go for Like, he probably will make Chun go first in the third mm -hmm. game, even though Chun, like, I, I must have missed it. Did Chun actually choose to be on the play or on the draw this game? John chose to be on the draw. Okay, so he did he, it right. He, he, did, uh, he, did, he did it correctly, yeah. Okay, because that was... Okay, that, then Doyle is just going to choose to be on the draw in the last mm -hmm. game. Yep. I'll be curious to see if anyone did any uh, different sideboarding, actually. But I don't yeah, think... Let's focus more on Doyle's sideboard this time. Yes. <laughs> I know that he also has the disrupting shoal, but it's going to be hard for him to actually hit the show and tell because of the, he needs to pitch a blue card, and he only has, I think, three prize only, guns. Yeah, it's the only the amalgam that pitches to disrupting shoal, so I don't think he actually brought them in. Yeah. Yeah, he may have brought in mind brick traps, I suppose. Uh, but that, that only goes off the worst case scenario. Yeah, like the mind break traps. Imagine Sean goes for cantrip, show and tell, cast mm -hmm. Emrakul, and then you take away the Emrakul. Okay, but other than that, it's yeah. Not it's not kind of well, good. it's okay uh, against Cunning Wish as well because that will then exile the Cunning Wish if he only has one piece to go off with. If he goes like show and tell, uh, omniscience and play, mm -hmm. and the Cunning Wish. Mm -hmm. But fire, then there's still the say. problem of yeah. That's true. It just feels like it's such a weird card because you also like always have to account for opportunity cost. You have to take something out for the mind bug traps. Yes. And there's yes. probably gonna be a ton of hands where you feel like, oh, I wish this was something else. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if we're talking about goldfish turns specifically, I think that Mac will not want any sideboard cards. But because this matchup is so dependent on on the combo, like it's two combo decks against one another, I think he has to bring in every interaction. And because as the game goes longer. 
I think it's Mac's game to lose rather than John's because he has the ability to interact with Mac. Or, I'm sorry, with John. Whereas John doesn't really interact with what Mac is doing at all. Yeah, yeah. Like, the only interaction he mentioned here is is, uh, Elishnorn, and Mm -hmm. even that can... technically be played around if yeah. it's coming with against progenitus or grizzlebent but that's gonna be like very unlikely like if you were doyle or uh, mac sorry <laughs> and you had a hand that didn't have a dredger but had progenitus would you keep right we already established that he kind of has to keep almost every end but like in the yeah. first game we also agreed that he might want to sideboard so let's see what did he, did he do he did not bring in the Mind Bear Traps, it looks like. He left those on the sideboard. So he just has the four force fools, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, and he t- looks like he took out the Nether Shadows. Yeah, I guess those are more on the slower side. And since yep. he has to take out something, he went for yeah, those. Yeah, so it, it looks like it was a pretty straightforward. He took out uh, his Nether Shadows and one of the Fairy Macabs that he has in the main. or mm-hmm. the old, and, and then he boarded, out, boarded in four force of walls and a Progenitus, I think. Yeah. For the fairy macabres and the nether shadows. I really want to see Progenitus win this game. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so yes. sweet. It'd be great. Having like your random 10-10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that hand is amazing. Oh, John's hand is amazing and Max's hand is, is horrible. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this time you must mulligan, right? This hand attacks with a, with a 3-1 on the third turn. Well... It's- he also has no dredgers, and he has all of his acrids in his hand. It's, That's yeah. Uh, and, and even worse, John has two time walks and already one part mm-hmm. of his combo and at, at uh, and the cantrip. Yeah, like, uh, John really is a tough. huge favorite to win this one here. I think so too. So, are we waiting for players to keep, or what's going on here? Maybe Mac is thinking about, well, like he's probably trying to fall in love with the hand, but it doesn't really work out because mm-hmm. he knows he's he's related to the hand and they don't really have a future and stuff. So he has to let go. Yes. You don't like, you don't often see hands without dredgers or enablers in the Manalist stretch deck, but Max, well, he, kept, he looks like he's kept, yeah. I mean, he's got Phantasmagorian, which which I kind of missed early on, so he can actually put all his Icarids into play and then attack for six on the second turn, but that gets rid of two Icarids, and then you attack for another three. Well, and... that also brings out the zombies from the bridges. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, his head might be much he might better be than functional, yeah. Thought. Yeah, agreed. I didn't I didn't uh, look at the Phantasmagorian either. That's true. So his hand could actually be pretty good. I mean, he could also dread return the Phantasmagorian if he ever chose to. <laughs> There's That's a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. Yes, there's a 6-6 six, six attacker. Like, this Phantasmagorian winning the game would be even sweeter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird because Chun doesn't really want to take any of those cards, so I guess he takes the... <laughs> yeah. I'd... Turn, or... Like, you definitely don't want to take the Phantasmagorian here. Correct. I'm curious as to see what he actually is going to take. Thoughtseize is normally very good in this matchup, actually, but it's weird because Max Hand is so bad against pretty much anything. <laughs> I feel like he has to take an Icarid. Yeah, chat's agreeing that he has to take an that it looks like he has to take an Icarid. Yeah, so on, on Max's side he's gonna draw and then he's not gonna discard, and the turn afterwards he's also not gonna discard. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Chana will already have resolved the uh, Preordain. Technically, if he finds more lands, he could also t- just get Surgical Extraction with a Cunning Wish. Oh my god, that would be like insane if he takes the Icarid the and then Surgical Extraction yeah. like triple discard. Yep. Oh, he, he finds a Dredger. Oh my god, he we does. actually got a game now. He does, uh, except this time around, John... Ooh, actually Dredger kind of enables most of the rest of his hand. Huh. He finds omniscience, but no way of getting that into play. Yeah, so I think these are bottoms. He could have kept the land and just shuffled. Oh, he kept the omniscience. Okay. I yeah. guess he needs one piece of that combo at all times. Yeah. Because just putting in Emrakul... Or can you actually get... Yeah, the, oh, he doesn't know about the Stink with him, but he does yeah. now, I guess. So what do you take with this with this Thoughtseize? What did, what did he take? Oh, he took the bridge. <laughs> I might have actually taken the Icarid just for the chat. Because then, next turn, he can really get Surgical and take out the Icarid. Mm-hmm. Because now he found the Lotus Petal, then he's like one mana 
down again because he has to get rid of the Lotus Battle. Right, but, but it might be worth it. It might slow him, slow him down enough to like not yeah. worry about the turn for the game for a little while. Maybe he's thinking about taking out the bridges with, with surgical. I don't know. That is also a possibility, I suppose. The problem is the the surgical play would have been great because it would have time walked him over multiple turns. Oh yeah. And that would have been extremely powerful. So so Mac didn't really do much this game this far. No. He's just sitting there and, and passing the turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and now John has to has to make a decision. Like, does he want to keep the cunning wish for a pitch card for Force of Will, which protects him from like a random uh, dread return, which might eventually come up? Because, well, he doesn't mm -hmm. know about the battle starts by, but no. I don't hate Mac's position here. Like, obviously, John, like if he ever finds show and tell, the game is probably going to be over. Right. But Mac is presenting something here. Like he's going to discard next turn, and then his engine is going to be underway. Yeah, I think um, I, that, if I was John, I would have done the what you had suggested and taken and wished for surgical extraction because I think that would have ended the game, not necessarily by a combo, but yeah, yeah. And, it's curious and now, Cunning Wish isn't really like doing much because Mac is going to discard the Phantasmagorian that gets multiple dredge, like basically his yeah. entire hand into the graveyard. Yeah. So your surgical gets you much less value. Yeah, surgical against Phantasmagorian is a lot is very difficult to kind of maneuver. Mm -hmm. Any sort of value oh, out of Danny uh, Betterman is mentioning the, in the chat. Maybe he actually brought in the surgical. Like I think oh, he, he may have, yeah. But yeah, we were focusing on on Max sideboarding in this game. Mm -hmm. So if he did that, well, then it, it makes sense why he wouldn't take the current there. Right, that just accelerates the clock for no reason. Yeah, so. we'll see. So there's my in the graveyard. He's gonna keep priority and discard probably all his stretchers, the Bellostrates by and, and the then Icarids. once again the three Icarids, leaving him with one Icarid and one Phantasmagorian in hand. And then he's gonna go crazy on his turn. Like John will be able to force a field at red return on the Bellostrates by unless John uh, unless Mac finds uh, cable therapy. Uh, this actually lets him surgical the Icarids now if you were to do so. If he actually has them in the graveyard, yeah. Uh, and yeah. in the sideboard. Yeah. Yes, if he has a surgical in the sideboard, this also kind of works. Uh, it's risky, but it probably slows him down enough to, to do that. Oh, it looks like uh, Rancor90 is confirming that he did not board in surgical extraction, so it's still in a sideboard. So he opted not to triple discard Mac, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering wonder what he's holding on for. Like he, There must cunning be a reason yeah. to keep the Cunning Wish. But at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm curious he's about really considering well. using it. Yeah, I think I, I think he's going to use it now. Um, and Surgical Lagrids, which slows down uh, Mac quite a lot. Yeah. Maybe his plan was to use the Cunning Wish to get... Maybe he's got one Limdus Ward in the sideboard, and his plan would be to to use that for Limdus Ward, and then use Limdus Ward to find Show and Tell. It would be a bit slow, but it would be a plan. That would actually he, work as yeah. well. Um, the thing is, he can't cast Limdus Ward from this position, so he would need to pass the turn once again, yeah. and that's already getting pretty risky. It's also possible that he didn't want to do it that specific turn, because he, didn't want, he thought the, the Lotus Petal was more valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the time he only had the underground sea and the lotus petal, or and the yeah, island and the lotus petal's yeah. lands, so so that may have been his line of thinking, which I, which makes sense. Yeah. On the upside, while he loses the lotus petal, he gets like three or four more draws because Mac isn't doing anything until that point. So. Right. Yeah. Right. But what are we? Yeah, we are still in the end Charles step. End step. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we. Are going to see the Icarus come into play? I wonder. He could also, like, something he could do is he could take out cable therapies if they ever get into the yard. He would need to do that in the draw step. Like, right. going for Cunning Wish Surgical, taking out the cable therapies is kind of like Force of Will on the cable therapies, but it gives uh, Mac less discard outlets uh, and also less less um, triggers for the uh, bridge the from below blows, because you yeah. can't sacrifice your creatures. So that could be a line. And he actually, he's going to have perfect information after the dredge on the Gulgaru Grave Troll. And when he sees that Mac doesn't have the resources to dread return the Bellistrad spy, he might go for that. The problem is, he's oh, got. It looks have like he's actually uh, do doing it turn. now. Yeah. 
It looks like he's kind of wishing for surgical extraction now during uh, Mac's upkeep instead. Yeah, oh, and there actually was a limb disorder in the side that he yeah. could have gone for, I guess. Mm-hmm. And he's taking the surgical, taking out the Icarus, I guess, which would be the main reason to, to do that before the draw step. Or actually, he wants to take... No, he, he doesn't take out the Grave Shot. He still has the Stinky Dump. Yeah, so he's just going to take out the Icarus. So EU Landon brings up a good point, and he says that he think it's possible that John thinks that he needed the Cunning Wish to stay in his hand in order to win the game, like, 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's possible that John thinks that Mac boarded in Progenitus and is playing around the Progenitus with the show intel. It's kind mm-hmm. of a stretch to think of it that way, I suppose, but it, the Cunning Wish would present would present a deterministic win, whereas Omniscience off of Emrakul is a little bit more dicey, I suppose. It's close, though. Yeah, but you also get the extra turn, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm not sure. And the scenario where we, uh, that we talked about where Mac actually gets to live through an Emrakul attack usually requires more like graveyard resources on his part. Yeah, more creatures uh, in, in play, yeah. Yeah, creatures and, and bridges. So, Unfortunately, Mac didn't really hit anything here, mm-hmm. did he? No, nothing important. He doesn't have any recursive creatures. The amalgam isn't turned on. Uh, and uh, also, it also doesn't really have John here. Have nope. John here. I guess it helps him if if Mac hits the absolute nuts of the str- dredge five yeah. and gets to dredge return, then he doesn't need to pitch his omniscience. And yeah. So it looks like he hit an arc amoeba. So that means his prized amalgam is turned on. Hmm. Uh, I don't see any cabal therapy in the graveyard though. No. The Phantasmagorium allows him to get to allows him to get this other two dredgers back into the graveyard. Yep. And then if he hits another Nactrum, it actually needs to be exactly Nactrum Weaver next turn. Then he can try to go for the dredge return, which we know is not gonna work. But he he actually like yeah. say he hits a cabal therapy and a Nactrum Weaver and he names Forcefil. Like he he might not be in the clear whether he wants to name Forcefil or Flusterstorm because we know John has both. Yes. But well, here's the the trouble, right? There's two dread returns in the graveyard, so over the course of three turns, he can do it twice. <laughs> I, I know we're thinking far off in the future here, but it looks yeah. like both players will be... Uh, there will be a few more turns taken this game. Yeah, and we are only like, I think, four more mana from hardcasting omniscience. Omniscience, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Say, if he finds Brainstorm and that Brainstorm gets him like uh, a Soul Land and three Lotus Petals, then he's almost there. Yep. <laughs> uh, it looks like there was no recursive creature again, so yeah. we're going to wait one more turn. Out three shadows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no shadows, so all that's left in the graveyard to get back would be one Nether Shadow and three more Narcomibas, it looks like. Three more mana. Almost there, Omniscience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost getting there. Well, we How cool would two... that be if this game ended with that? <laughs> <laughs> we actually have Hardcast uh, Force of Full Up, so John can actually, if he really needs to, Force of Full twice by pitching the yeah. Omniscience. Like, if he needs to do it in a single turn, or like once Over every the... turn. Yeah, once yeah. every other turn. Uh, that's amusing. Oh, that's Cabal Therapy. <laughs> and how many bridges? He's got two bridges. So yeah, he can yeah, he has two bridges. Yep. And then go for that Dread Return. So Chun really has to Force the Cabal Therapy. He, he has to Force twice, actually, now. Yeah, do you think um, Mac is going? Yeah, he's definitely going for the Dread Return, even yeah, if he's, he's, he's he Therapy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he has to force of will twice yeah. because he has to force of will cabal therapy for force of will, and then he has to force of will the dread return. And that makes it so that Chun, I think he's not even drawing life anymore. Like no, say he, he draws show and tell and he puts an Emrakul, that might not be good enough, especially since Mac can take fifteen, but he's also gonna have like he's gonna put Skinkweed in from his hand to play. <laughs> right. I, I don't think John actually has any outs left. Yeah, I think uh, the game might be over. Yeah, the game is over. Unless Mac is too scared to go for the dirty turn here, but like, what would be a line then? Like, pass the yeah. turn? That, that well, I, I don't think he's going to be scared at all because if he if it doesn't work this turn, he can just do it again next turn. Because True. he has a second dread return and he yeah, doesn't have yeah. zombies to do it. 
And that way he actually forces John to pitch any blue card that he might yep. have. And we know that that's actually going to be the nail in the coffin for, for John if he has to pitch the, the omniscients. Mm -hmm. uh, show and tell. So if he draws show and tell into wish isn't out, but it's not. Because he has to draw. Well, he has to go brainstorm into show and tell cunning wish as an out. He has to draw He's exactly not... brainstorm. Oh, he actually did it resolve. Okay. He, okay. That's, I mean, that could be another, like, bluff from John's part. Like, John would be like, yeah, I've got Flusterstorm plus Force or something. You, maybe mm -hmm. you're not going to name Force. Because it would be so obvious that you would Force here. He's not forcing to make it mm -hmm. seem like he, he doesn't have... Like, that would be my reasoning to not Force there. Yeah, that, that would no, make sense. Not but afraid, yeah, the game is over, sense. so... Good well, games. They, yeah, <laughs> that was a very exciting match to watch and commentate for, and... That was great. <laughs> yeah, both players didn't really get to do what their decks usually does. They had to like find mm -hmm. alternate ways to, to get into the game. And yeah, in the end, John ended up not taking this, but Mac, which I thought he he wasn't really the favorite to take this. Usually I don't think so either, Martin's yeah. has issues with combo. And yeah, so congratulations to Mac. You're on the quarterfinals. Um, actually, who's Mac going to face? Mac is going to face... I have the bracket pulled up. You've got, yeah, I actually have it in Photoshop. I just realized. Mac is <laughs> going to face... Oh, Nick. Yeah, Nick yeah. from South Florida Magic. Nick, Nick Viola, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's Nick Viola. And the winner of that is going to face either Caleb Durward, Bob Wang, or Tim Ekpinar. And awesome. yeah, on the other side of the bracket, we got Mike... Michael Bonder taking on Brad Chain, and I will either face. No, actually, I'm gonna face Travis Yu. It's already been decided. Mm -hmm. In a couple of really exciting best of five matches where both players bring three different decks, like I'm really looking forward to that because yeah, that's gonna be a very exciting series. Yeah, it's, on one hand, there's gonna be a ton of meta gaming going, like meta gaming not in the actual meta game wise, but mm -hmm. for the other player. Like, what do you think the other player is more likely to bring? To bring obviously, like. Travis is going to think that I'm going to bring elves, and I know that he's probably <laughs> going to bring, like, lands. Right. And then we, we have to, like... Th there's only also the dance about which deck do you field first. Like, last time when I was in the finals against against Caleb... Caleb yeah, Durward, yeah. Yeah, like, both players had miracles, and mm -hmm. you... Every also one player played one anti miracles deck that he considered to be anti anti miracles, and you you had to actually decide. And I decided to to start off with miracles, and Caleb had his what he considered anti miracles deck. And when I played the the tundra, I remember he he actually wrote something like yes in the chat because in a way <laughs> he, he won that that lottery. And yeah, but unfortunately, uh, even though I took out his first two decks, I ended up going down two to three, where mm -hmm. because he got the clean sweep with ten fins, which is pretty amazing. So yeah, those those best of five matches they really make for tons of entertainment. Yeah, I'm very very excited to watch those matches. Um, you're gonna see the wide range of legacy players and what they're all they all have access and experience with, which is great. Like uh, I, I personally know Jarvis really well, and I know his range is very wide and he plays pretty much everything and yeah. then uh, i know people like uh not to knock on him but anurag he's only played like <laughs> one deck in most of his legacy career and his branching out after the ban kind of like showed that combat math uh, as one facet of his repertoire that isn't that strong uh, and so on so you're gonna see like little experiences like that all over the place and I'm really, really excited to watch and see what everyone brings and plays yeah. So, what if I put you on the spot? Which which three decks would you play, bring in the blind? Oh God, um, I would probably play uh, the new Miracles deck or whatever the Portent Miracles deck. I'd probably also bring Grixis Delver and Storm because those are mm -hmm. the only two decks I've mm -hmm. ever been comfortable playing outside of Control Strike. And so. which deck would you field first, like in the blind? Uh, you don't probably know Storm. Playing. Probably Storm, actually. Okay, yes. I thought I you would say like Grixis Delver. Well, most people would put me on uh, either Miracles or Grixis Delver, I think, uh, just okay. on the, the buy the buy. And I think Storm would have the most free wins early on, I suppose. But I could be wrong about that. I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Mac, are you trying to tell us something? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not gonna say. Like, I, I've got a couple of decks in mind that okay. I will bring against Travis. It's just more about the. Yeah, the order of the decks. Like yes. Now, do you have to? Are you able to change decks after the rounds? So yeah, whatever you, you lose. But if you okay. win, you're locked into the deck. Okay, that makes sense. Well, no, I'm sorry, not during the series. 
uh, like in so you're gonna play Jarvis next week. The winner of mm-hmm. either one of you, do you change your decks that you're playing for the following match or you can you can okay. if you want okay. to yeah. Cool. Then yeah, it'll be really cool to see. And I think next up we have uh, Bob Wong against against the Mac Pinar. Uh, but I think we are also doing like a raffle 